This seminar is about regime shifts in social ecological systems. So a regime shift can be defined as a large, persistent change in the structure and function of a system. And one of the most iconic examples is the shift from a clear water to a eutrophic lake, where a eutrophic lake is a lake dominated by algae. And so essentially what happens is you have the shift from a lake in which the, the water is quite clear and you have a lot of fish and uh, plants growing on the floor of the lake to one in which the plants on the floor of the lake have actually died and you have these thick mats of algae floating in the water. And these uh, eutrophic or algae-dominated lakes are quite unpleasant to people, <coughs> most because they are quite smelly, um, so they decrease the value of properties around the lake. And also they can be uh, dangerous to swimming because of the toxins produced by the algae, um, which also increases the water treatment costs. So essentially, the way in which we generally recognize these regime shifts um, is by just looking at the system and seeing a big change. Or what scientists generally do is look at some time series data with respect to a particular variable in which they're interested. So for instance, um, they might be collecting data for a, a period of some years, so over time, um, looking at the level of algae in a lake. And so it might have been quite low for, say, for many years, but changing over time. And then suddenly there's a big jump and these uh, algae levels really increase and then they stay really high for quite a long time. And this kind of uh, feature, sort of, it doesn't always show that there definitely has been a regime shift, but it can indicate that there probably has been. And then we can research more about what the reasons for this might be. Another way in which we often represent these uh, regime shifts is to think of them metaphorically as a, a cup and ball, or with these two different valleys. So we can think of these regimes, say, as two kind of basins of attraction or valleys, and we think of the system state um, as a ball. And so essentially, while the system is in one regime, say this is the clear water regime, it will move about um, similar to what is indicated here. But at some point, um, either due to a big shock or some other change, it might actually move into this alternate regime, um, say in this case, the eutrophic regime. So an important thing to understand is that these different regimes are actually created and maintained by strong feedbacks within the system. So for instance, in the clear water regime, one of the strong feedbacks is that these rooted plants on the lake floor absorb the phosphorus in the water. And so they keep cleaning the water. And in fact, actually by absorbing that phosphorus, those nutrients also help those plants grow better up to a certain point. And so there's a strong feedback where, in a sense, up to a certain point, these increased phosphorus helps the plants grow and the plants pull the phosphorus out of the water. And that dynamic maintains this clear water regime. We can then think about what are the, the, the forces or ways in which we can get a shift from one regime to the other. And essentially, there are two main mechanisms. And in general, in practice, these two mechanisms act together. Um, but we, it's useful to separate them out um, conceptually and for thinking about um, how these uh, regime shifts happen. So one um, mechanism by which such a shift can happen is by a big shock to the system. Uh, and this could be, for instance, a, a big rainfall event that washes a huge amount of phosphorus into a lake. And essentially what happens in this case is that the feedbacks that maintain this clear water regime are overwhelmed. So, in fact, what happens is that the, the levels of phosphorus in the lake exceed the amount that can be absorbed by these rooted plants. And we suddenly have the system flip into a state where we get these huge algal blooms which are growing from the excess phosphorus which these plants haven't been able to absorb. And what, what then happens, in fact, is that these algae actually cr create these dense mats and they shade out um, these rooted plants. So these rooted plants don't get enough sunlight to keep growing and they actually die, and so we've actually broken that feedback. The second main mechanism by which these regime shifts can happen, and the ones that um, a lot of researchers, especially at the Resilience Centre, spend a lot of their time researching, is to actually focus on kind of drivers or gradual changes in these systems that can erode um, the resilience, which in a sense is the depth of this basin. So what we find then is if we start with, say, these two deep basins, is that over time, if we, we have actually, say, phosphorus input into a lake, it actually accumulates in the sediment on the lake floor. 
And what happens is that gradually over time, this basin of attraction becomes shallower and shallower. And suddenly, at some point, it can disappear. And one of the things that's uh, quite difficult about um, actually detecting this kind of regime shift is that when the system, say represented by this ball, is in the state, as this basin becomes narrower and narrower, this ball sort of moves up, metaphorically speaking. And it can be quite difficult to detect a change in the actual system. So you might not see much change if you just looked out there at the lake. But at some point, suddenly this, this feedback that maintains this regime has got so weak um, that the system suddenly flips over. Um, and that generally then happens as a big surprise to the people living there. So, in summary, um, we can think of regime shifts as these kinds of large persistent changes um, in the structure and function of a system, which often have really big impacts on, on the services or the benefits provided by these ecosystems, and therefore on human well-being.